year and we've gotten nothing but positive feedback. Uh, some of the people that we've requested to come, different groups and things, they haven't came. And uh, the reason for starting it was the whole thing with Kaepernick. Whether you agree, disagree, uh, how do we get past it? What's the solution? Like, how do we mend that gap? Are we gonna continue to just hate on each other, hate police, I don't like the police, police don't like you, get them whatever, whatever. And the solution we came up with, nobody wants to live in a community that the purge, like the movie The Purge, with no law enforcement. So we have to coexist. And the only way we can coexist is dialogue, have empathy for something that you may know nothing about. And what we were trying to do is make ourselves available so that you can ask us a question. This is the opportunity to ask us anything that you want and get feedback on it. If we don't have the answer, we will try to provide you with the route to try to get the answer. And I think it's enough law enforcement, we hope more people show up just because a lot of people don't know. And some of the things that they believe or to be true sometimes are not true. And we're not here to make a sob story. We're not here to, we're just here to listen, talk, and try to create change. And this is how we're trying to start it. A lot of times people feel like if they come, oh, you snitching, you talk to the police, different stuff like that, and that's not what this is. We're not looking for anybody to come snitch. We have more than enough that do that already. So <laughs> that's not the purpose of this. And we're not also trying to candy coat what's the reality, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, every time we cut on the news and we see somebody, a kid, black kid being killed or something, that affects all of us because for a police officer, we get blamed for, I, I've only been on 15 years and I get blamed for Rodney King and different stuff like that, that I wasn't a cop when that happened. So it's one of those things where the reason that a lot of people still focus on some of those incidents is because that's all they know. And they haven't seen any different because we haven't made ourselves necessarily available to come speak to you about what you saw or how that affects you or so forth and so on. So we will open up the floor. Reese is our narrator. He has to leave at eight. He has to get his kids. He's from the, uh, the radio station. And he usually narrates for us and uh, polls the questions so that... Uh, how you doing, Steve? We want everybody to feel comfortable asking whatever you so choose feel like asking and uh, we just try to keep it going. Usually when we start, it starts off kind of slow and then once everybody kind of get comfortable and opens up, then the questions start kind of flowing and the comments and we start, the dialogue start going. So without further ado, I'm going to open it up to Reese so he can open it up to Appreciate the floor. It, and get it going. Right quick. Um, one of the reasons why we wanted to do it in barbershops is because we know in the black community, the barbershop is somewhere where we talk about anything and everything. And in, in Atlanta, we have a lot of community meetings, but normally we'll have them at churches or um, community centers. And normally people feel like if they're at a church or a community center, they hold back on what they want to say. So we felt it was important to have it at a barbershop so everybody can be free. Um, if, if you're mad at us, let us know that you're mad at us. Um, as, as Ty said, we try, we try not to curse, but if you feel like that's what you have to do to get your message out, go ahead. We're grown. Drop so the bombs. We, we won't be offended. We, we, we need to heal, heal or we need to hear the real. Right. So I just wanted to put that piece in there so everybody can understand. Don't don't hold back. Whatever you have to say, let, let us hear. Who are you? <laughs> like that. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Alright. My name is Todd Coy. I'm one of the uh, deputy chiefs with the Atlanta Police Department. I've been on for 27 years and I have uh, had multiple assignments from uh, working drugs to fugitive to homeland security. I, I've touched a little bit of everything. Uh, what was good about it, and, and I'm gonna sit down in a minute because this is the, the younger officer's show. Um, when, when I was a zone commander, I 
um, had this same idea and we held it a couple of times at some barbershops in yeah. the city. When I became the uh, deputy chief and I was over all the investigators, Dennis and I spoke and he came with me with the same idea. And so it was like, by all means, whatever I can do to help further this, wanted to do it because I feel like it's important. We, the department, we feel like it's important. So all that's right. what we do. Yeah, yeah, okay. appreciate you. All right. Without further ado, Marcus. Hello everybody, how y'all feeling today? Y'all feeling yeah, all right? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Wake up a little bit. Hey, uh, but like you said, I'm Reese. I don't know if you guys were the station But I'm with uh, Hot 1079, and uh, he pulled me out here because I talk for a living, so I better be good at it today. <laughs> um, what I love to see on these walls, I see a lot of excellence, and that's what we're trying to pitch today, just trying to get our community and bridge together between the people that are here to protect us and the people that want to be protected for the most part. And like he said, we got a bunch of questions, but I want to open it up to the floor first. Does anybody have a question, concern you want to bring up before we get to this list in my phone? She got a notebook. Uh-oh, we in trouble. <laughs> anybody on this side? He just trying to get that temp fade, no problem. Okay, right here. Uh, all right. Okay, yes ma'am. What's your name? Um, he'll die, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, what are y'all doing to eliminate the gangs? Are you in this area? I'm going to County and I am a gang detective. I've been a gang detective for the last five or six years. And unfortunately, uh, with the gang problem in, the, in Atlanta, it was taken lightly in the beginning because people felt like this is the South. We don't have that. That's LA, that's New York, that's Chicago. Well, the same reason that, how many of you guys are from somewhere else? The same reason mostly all of us came here is the same reason that gangs have thrived in Atlanta. You can get cheap, big houses, and nice warm weather, and that's the norm. So a lot of the gangs have basically set up shop in and around the metro Atlanta area. Unfortunately, with the uh, hip-hop community, it has also <laughs> played a role in it because a lot of our gang members have are associated with the rap. So rap and gangs kind of go hand in hand. And with that, they have a voice and they have an audience, a young audience that listens to this music. I listen to rap music and I'm sure a lot of us listen to rap music, hip hop music, and I can separate the two. I can separate the fact that when he say, I'm, I'm gonna shoot you in your face, I'm gonna wet you, he, he, it, that, I can take that as just entertainment. But for a younger person with no guidance, they may take that as being truth and say, oh, I want to do that as well. So that has helped bolster. What You say, what are we doing to try to combat it? In our department, we try to uh, prosecute, document, and we uh, do whatever we need to do to bring closure to a victim, to an area, and so forth and so on. But the unfortunate part about it, working as a detective, it's hard to prosecute when you don't get witness cooperation from the community because of, in some instances it's a lack of trust. Some instances people don't trust you enough to know that I got your best interest at hand because at the end of the day, I only work 40 hours a week in that community. You have to live in that community. And if I ask you to be a witness, in some instances people will put in witness statements on Instagram and things like that, so then you can almost become a target. So it's an uphill battle but it takes not only the police to combat that problem. You, uh, in 2008, when the housing market crashed, the first thing they slashed was after school program. Uh, you can drive by many ball fields right now, basketball courts, you're not gonna see any kids out there because a lot of kids are in the house playing PlayStation, on, online playing with their phones. With that, they're able to, even though you're out here in this area, you can pretty much log in and, into Bankhead Highway and pick up on some of the trends around the city and some of the gang lingo from other places. So it's an uphill battle, but we uh, try to do everything that we can to combat it. Quick question, Harvey, I want to uh, piggyback on her question and come right to you. Can you remember what you, because I can't remember five minutes. No, I was going to piggyback on her question. Okay, I just want to ask, do you have something personally that you're dealing with that made you want to ask that question, or is it just a hot topic in your neighborhood? Well, I know a lot of youth, I deal with hundreds of youth, and most of them are gang members. So the point of me asking that before it gets to the point of incarceration, 
what are you doing to eliminate that? Like, are y'all building a rapport with them? Are you trying to help them with a job? Most of them don't have education. Most of them can't read. And I know because I personally talk to them. So if I can interject for him, and I know that probably ducks sell off of it. They do a lot of medicine. Him personally, I know he goes. Because a lot of them speech. grow up on the streets. They have to take care of themselves. And then been in the game, sometimes you have to murder somebody to get in a situation because I talk to a lot of youth and I ask them, well, you know, if you did it, why did you do it? Then they'd tell me why. Well, in order to get in this game, I had to do this. My fellow brother was doing this. So they don't really have a family. So have y'all thought about going into the communities we, to reach out to them personally? Let me get it right quick. See, in, some instances, in some instances, yes, but in some instances, some of the things that you're saying, those are social issues. That's not necessarily a police issue. Like our job, although is to be community oriented and to serve and protect, it's only so much that we can do because it's almost like once the we have to uphold the law also. So like you said, I mentor and different things like that. But at the end of the day, if you carjack somebody, you jump in somebody's new car, you rob somebody, you shoot, or murder somebody. Well, guess what? I got to do my job at the end of the day because on the other end of that spectrum, it's a victim. It's somebody that's yearning for their family member and different things like that. So it's, it's, it's. I'm not talking about that part. I'm talking about the prevention. Well, that's what I'm well, that's, speaking about. That's what he said. Did you, did you hear what he said? Because they think about the it. police is against them. And right. I'm like, no. Well, that's what this is for to let them know that yeah. Can you invite them here too? And let, let, let me add, add to that. We know that we cannot arrest ourselves out of this problem. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it, like you said, is prevention. So one of the things we did last year, we opened um, a center called the Net Youth Promise Center. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is um, when, when our officers on the street find uh, a young adult that um, has done something wrong but has not committed a murder or uh, a violent felony, and because of that officer's rapport with that uh, youth and that youth's family, he or she may think that, hey, um, it is something that we can do to stop that trail of them going to a game. So we take them to the that youth for promise. And that center, uh, it's a encompassing, an all-encompassing place where we have youth counselors, job counselors, psychologists, a, just a bunch of different services. Right. right. That's what I was so a, a lot of um, youth, they may be in school, but still may not know how to read. Or they dropped out of school. So we, can, we try and get them back in school, get them to get a GED. If they have